Hey guys, it's Alex, and I apologize for the people that are constantly asking me to make videos and all that stuff. I have a full-time job. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. YouTube's not paying me that good yet, and you know, I have a full-time job that is priority, so I cannot just constantly crank out videos. And I also don't want to give you guys just filler, just junk, like videos for the sake of making video. I want you to have content that means something, is a little something. So. What I'm gonna show you today is uh, a full suspension setup that I got for the Fairmont. Yes, remember about two or three months ago I talked to you about getting the Fairmont up and going? Well, you know, finances and time have uh, finally become available to me. And I went to UPR and I got a complete suspension. I'm saying everything, K-member, control arms, coilovers, you name it, and I just got it in. And pretty much this is what it looks like, a whole bunch of boxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it out because I have a whole bunch of room Hey there, Paul. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of room and I'm going to lay it out just so you can see what all it takes to, you know, kind of what it looks like all laid out. K-member, control arms, a little bit of everything. Also got a couple boxes here which are torque box reinforcement and I believe these are a set of springs for the coilover. Let's lay it out and show you what it's all about. Okay, here it is all laid out out of the boxes and I'm going to go through it. Hey, Paul, what are you doing? <laughs> He's going to check it out kind of go through it one but not one by one but kind of show you what's going on and what I did is I laid it out in a certain way so you can sort of visualize how it's going to go in the car got the polyurethane motor mounts got the UPR K member UPR front control arms got the Viking front springs okay so basically you can visualize how it's going to go in the car got a drive shaft loop again all this stuff is made from UPR minus the springs the springs are made from Viking Got the caster camber plates, okay? Got the adjustable coilover suspension, obviously. Drive shaft loop I showed you. And the rear suspension setup is, in my opinion, the most important on a Fox body. Now, Fox bodies, in my opinion, are a superior chassis based on the, uh, basically the wheelbase, the weight, basically everything that, the way the car is set up is superior to anything. If you look at any races, uh, lights out, no mercy, any NMRA race, anything like that, they're all Fox bodies, okay, whether they have an LS in it, a big block in it, twin turbo, whatever the hell, most of them, most of the fastest stuff is a Fox body. So here what we have is solid rear control arms. I'm not going to go with any type of bushing material. It is going to be a harsh ride, but I don't care, okay? If you guys know anything about Fox bodies, you know what these guys are. Torque box reinforcements. What's the torque box reinforcement? Well, on Fox bodies, guys, wherever the control arm bolts up to, it's not held in there that well. And especially when you start launching really hard and start yanking back at the basically the mounting point of all of the control arms, they get weak. So these guys basically sandwich underneath the car and on top of the car and reinforce the torque box lower torque box upper torque box so that it doesn't get ripped out now you can weld these in or bolt these in what i'm going to do is bolt these in and then weld them in from the bottom and the top so not only am i going to reinforce the torque box i'm going to weld it some people like to just weld it i'd rather reinforce it and weld it to make sure it's all good to go i also have a street anti-roll bar with all the supporting hardware with the links and its mounting points. I believe these guys mount a little different than before. I think they mount on top of the rear end as opposed to on the side of the body. I'll see once I get it uh, all put in. So yeah, guys, this is what's been going on. It's, it's a long process, but I wanted to keep you up to date as to what's going on with the Fairmont Project. The Fairmont Project is up and going. It's not something that I'm slacking on. It's just a matter of me having a full-time job, the funds, the finances, and the time to actually give you an update. So again, this is the suspension for the Fairmont. So the Genesis got a new set of wheels. They got the TSWs that kind of been like a spare set that have been laying around here at Power by the Hour. By the way, I'm at Power by the Hour. Sorry about the wind, but we're near an airport. This is their new location. So if you come southern, that is Southern Boulevard. Take a ride on Lindy Lane. Here you go. Power by the Hour. This is where it's at. Okay. 
Okay, so anyway, the Genesis had a couple of tire blowouts because the tires that came with it started fucking delaminating. Literally, the treads were separating. So I ended up putting a set of uh, TSWs in it. And you know what, man? This bitch looking tight. 305, 35, 20s in the back. Gee, man. All right, let's go inside, see what they got going on. Hey guys, it's Alex here at Power by the Hour again. Listening to the Doggy Style album. Can't be a bad thing. So I wanted to show you what's going on here. And I wanted to showcase a car that I've showed a bunch of times that I've never really had a chance to actually sit down in it and explain to you what's going on with this whole car. As of now, let me just show you around real quick of the things that's happening in there. And we'll go ahead and head to that car shortly. So right now they're working on a S550 road race car here. This car got a complete Magnaflow exhaust with American Racing headers. It's gonna be a uh, road racing deal. Looking real nice. You got a brake upgrade. Maximum Motorsports suspension. I believe front and rear. Big boy brakes in the back, Wilwood's in the back. Coilovers all the way around. This car is a Roush automatic car that got a complete like Cobra Jet motor. I mean, it's 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 all done up. Okay, it's fully built. It's a convertible. He wants to run it in some class racing in NHRA. He just upgraded to the smaller weight savings Willwood brake setup. Looking real nice. He's got the whole all the safety features you need on a car if you're going to compete in NHRA. They don't mess around when it comes to you know some of their uh, safety items. So he also has a TIG Vision. I always talk about the TIG Vision anti-roll bar. Very nice. I have a UPR one myself, but TIG Vision really makes nice stuff. Viking rear shocks doing the work. Okay, and this is a Roush track pack. Yeah, 427R track pack. Showed up. What are we doing to this, Rich? Change the transmission out? Oh, we're gonna oh we're gonna upgrade the head unit. So so this car has a Pro Charger supercharger in it. It has a D1. What's wrong with you, man? What, what's the problem, man? Rich had to pause it because the doggy style record talks a lot about this. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of bad stuff. So they're gonna upgrade, I think, the head unit from a D to a P, I think, or the other way around. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one's bigger, Pro Charger. But he's gonna go auto with this car. Yep. Oh, he's gonna drag race it looks like. Got the big blow off valve, red race blow off valve. Got the big Pro Charger intercooler up front. Going from a stick to an auto. Looks like it'll be a drag car going forward. Okay, thank you Rich, you can turn on doggy style again if you want. <laughs> and now I'm gonna head outside and again guys, excuse the wind. I really don't have fancy equipment and I'm not a professional YouTuber. It is very windy out here. I'll show you why it's real windy out here. This is the new Power by the Hour location on Southern Boulevard in West Palm Beach. And it's next to the airport. That's right. <laughs> so that's why you, uh, you hear all the wind and everything. It's a very wide open area. So this car is a car I've showcased a bunch of times. I've not really showcased. I've sort of talked about it here and there. But it is one of the baddest coyotes on the planet. I'm saying, remember how I said the that blue GT500? badass coyote well this is probably one of if not the baddest street driven coyotes on the planet okay I'm gonna show you what's going on with it um, if you might recognize the car it is Joey Basil's 2014 I believe it's a 2014 turbo coyote with an NPR built engine a fluid twin turbo kit I'm gonna kind of go over it if this wind decides to die down well, I'm going to do my best, even though this wind might just be a problem. So, you might recognize this car a couple of years ago. There I am. A couple of years ago, this car went 880s on 20-inch wheels, okay? Um, now, does that matter? Honestly, I don't care that it went 8s on 20s. That's one of those micro records that, like, three people give a shit about. I give a shit about if it's fast, and it was fast. Even if it was on 20s, it was freaking fast. And there was a couple of reasons it was that fast, okay? management the tuning at the time was pretty darn legit the interior is not a gutted interior it is you know a premium car the only thing he did was took the passenger seat out he even still if I think yeah he even has the rear seat in it still and he has a slightly 
you know, slightly lighter Recaro style, you know, Sparco or something like that seat in this car. But there is like no weight savings on this car. The car is fully, you know, fully uh, equipped still. More so being that it has a turbo kit, it has a 6R80. And the tuning is being done via the end gauge. Tuning is being done by the guys over at Lund Racing. This has been pretty much their baby from the beginning. Them and Jake have uh, done a lot of work on this car, but recently, the thing that really makes it go nowadays and it's really doing most of the work is this guy right here. The AMS 2000. Now, Jake, I was talking to Jake for a little bit about this AMS 2000. I'm not a turbo guy, I don't know much about turbos, but what he explained to me on this guy was pretty unreal. So the software, very intricate, very, you know, powerful. So what he tells me is, this car has literally five settings based on this toggle switch. So let's say for instance, you want the intercooler pump on at all times, okay? You set it on setting one, and when you're street driving it, the intercooler pump is on all the time, and the boost is by mile per hour, not time based. For instance, uh, number two, you have more boost ramped in based on time, and the intercooler pump comes on only when you're under boost. And then three and four probably different boost levels and five is valet meaning if you're going to go somewhere out to eat for whatever reason in this car you put it on number five and the guy barely has you know any boost so that's the most powerful part of this car i think the ams 2000 and it allows jake to ramp in the boost based on many many different variables i'll show you what's going on in the trunk this car has gone i believe 168 or 170 mile an hour let me be really careful lifting everything up so he needs a shoe, so it's not there just for show. Now, he has a TIG Vision ice tank, a centrifugal style intercooler pump with big badass lines. You cannot mess around with cooling an engine that is this powerful, this well built and can generate this much heat. It has a 4 Innovations triple hat with an F3 C controller, FC3, sorry, FC3 controller, similar to the one I have. All I'm doing is running two pumps. This guy requires all three based on the amount of power it makes. As you can see, roll cage is fully done. Brought all the way to the back. I mean, this, this car is done right. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. So the car features an NPR. I, li I love these things. These things are baller. Just love these things. So this car features an MPR completely built engine with locked cams, no VCT. A GT350 intake manifold. This car needed a little bit more up top and the GT350 manifold accomplished that. They have CO2 going into the gates to basically allow boost ramp in, boost and they just pretty much as much boost as they want based on the whatever the AMS is commanding, they have it all set up. Okay, I'm not sure of the size of the turbos, but they're, uh, I don't know, I have no idea of the size of the turbos. But again, this is, you know, one of the first cars, if not the first car, that had a, a complete, you know, factory kind of finish fluid twin turbo kit. Again, NPR built engine, everything was built here at Power of the Hour, tuned by the guys at Lund Racing. As you can see, it has four innovations, fuel system, I mean, pretty much done right, in my opinion. Now... The difference between this car and most others is it has twin intercoolers. If you get underneath the car, there's an intercooler here and another one here. That's the only difference between that and a production fluid kit. A lot of the work was done by the guys here. A lot of the fab work was done completely here. Uh, Harvey was the one that did a lot of the fab work of the, you know, the pipe going, the, the charge pipe here. But yeah, if you wouldn't know this car is a bottom I am saying bottom eight second car it has gone deep eight has gone 830 in Bradenton last year went went some rounds before he had a drive shaft twist on him he was well into on his way of uh, winning the coyote turbo coyote class at Bradenton this year so now what they've done is they've done some changes to the transmission they have a circle D5 disc converter I mean it is and they have, they finally got a drag setup on it which I love for the longest time, this car had 20s and then it had 17s and it was going 830s on 17s in the rear and 20s in the front. But this time, he's going to go and go ahead and see what it can do on a full drag setup. Unfortunately, we're testing at Palm Beach International Raceway, which isn't the best prep track on the planet, but it's what we got. 
So I wanted to show you a little bit about this car, kind of a little, little bit of a go around so you can see something, you know, that I see all the time. So they went ahead and put it on the dyno yesterday just to test the lockup. So here's that video so you can enjoy some turbo whooshing sounds. just went in there and talked to Jake and he corrected me the way he adjusts boost on this car is with manifold pressure I got to take a look at that so instead of co2 to push down on the gate he's using manifold aha uh -huh. okay so he's got it plumbed into the manifold itself I see okay so basically he's using boost to push on the gate and it can wow he can actually control that via the AMS you know what I wish I could give you more in-depth detail of how this all works, but this is all fucking voodoo magic when it comes to me. If it doesn't have a belt being driven by the crank, I'm kind of a lost puppy, and I'm at least willing to admit that. <laughs> but according to Jake, he uses manifold pressure to push on the gate to adjust boost. It's basically what he told me, and I want to believe him because he's a turbo guy. He's kind of the guy that kind of developed this whole deal. Uh, um, you know, don't let anyone else tell you that he wasn't the dude that did all this. Jake is the turbo guy power the power by the hour and kind of runs the show and any ideas and anything that really comes out of here is, is his deal. So yeah, he uses manifold pressure aka boost, push on the gate, make more boost. Pretty sweet. I love these little latches. I just gotta show you it's like latch porn. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. See that little guy right there? It goes in. Yep. And it locks. Love this car. Okay, guys. Well, there's an update as to what I've been, you know, up to. Um, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so I don't, I can't do this as often as I'd like to. I have a real job, and that's my main priority. So I can't bring out, you know, four or five videos a week because I need you. I need to bring you content, not bullshit. So, just want to show you Joey Basil's car, one of the baddest street-driven Coyotes on the planet. Period. Built here at Power by the Hour. Um, we're gonna go to the track tomorrow. Hopefully I can get some video of that and update you in the next video with what the car runs in this shitty Florida heat because it's getting ready for the Mod Nationals. Now the Mod Motor Nationals in South Georgia Motorsports Park, I believe it's the second week of November, is basically a race that is nothing but Mod Motor Power Mustang. Now what is a modular motor in, in those uh, definitions? Overhead cam, okay, overhead cam. Three valves, two valves, four valves, Coyote. That is a mod motor in the sense of the of the word. So this car is going to compete in the Mod Motor Nationals. I'm going to try to compete in the Driver Mod class to defend the title of Driver Mod. But there's some big heavy hitters coming through, so I have to really step up my game. So I'll be bringing you updates as to how my car does at the track, with the changes I've made with the T56, with the E85, with a little bit more boost. See if we can get the car in the nines. Once it goes nines and I run a couple of races, I'm going to sell that sucker, work on the Fairmont because it's a thousand pounds lighter, and you know. I'd rather work with a lighter chassis, and I'm a big lover of the Fox body. So, stay tuned for that stuff. Talk to you later.